Cowboys and Giants. We always love this NFC East matchup. Look ahead was Dallas minus seven. We reopened four and a half after what was a very impressive win for the Giants, uh, upsetting the Browns 21-15. They were a big dog in that game, nearly a touchdown underdog. But since then, we've kind of been trading between that five and six window, so we did see some buyback on the favorite. Um, Dallas, I don't know what to make of their performance last week besides it started really bad and ended really good. You could argue that the offense got going a little bit. The defense has been absolutely brutal, could not stop the run. Do you significantly downgrade Dallas after their performance last week? The final score was just a field goal, Fez, but obviously falling behind 28 to six, less than ideal. Yeah, you got to bring him down by half a point to a point, despite almost hitting the number, losing by only three, a miracle onside kick recovery. So, you know, I got to tell you, my numbers make this game four. And what mm. that means is at five and a half, it's a strong lean. But um, sixes are popping up here and there. As soon as we get to a plus six, I will be investing in the G-men. And let's face it, there's a game changer going on with the Giants. That rookie wide receiver is playing better than anybody yeah. other than Justin Jefferson in the NFL. He is just incredible. You know, Danny Dimes is throwing like Danny Quarters, like at light speed, just in any area code close to him. And Neighbors just puts out his hand, bang, and catches it. It's amazing. Chris, what do we think? Um, it's tough to back a team that's uh, minus 16 and a half against the spread the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, so obviously uh, th that's a cause for concern. But uh, when you have a team of this quality that, that fits into that profile, uh, they tend to rebound uh, quite well. So um, my model actually – thinks the line is a little short still. Um, I actually got involved in it earlier. Um, I still want to use it. It's it's a standalone game. I like to use the standalone games uh, because I, I feel like I'm borrowing value. Uh, so if I use a teaser leg or I use a parlay, uh, I feel like I'm borrowing. I, I was going to bet that team on the, you know, on the square at the regular spread line anyway. I, I feel like I'm borrowing value. So I know I'm technically not, but th that's the way I, I perceive it. So um, I'm going to use, I don't like the uh, the line where it sits at five and a half, six right now. So I'm going to use them. I believe I put them in a, a a parlay, didn't I? Yeah, you got a, a money line parlay. Um, if you want to reveal the second leg now, you can, but we can we can wait on that if you want. But you do have Dallas. Yeah, I'm going to go into more detail because I got a lot to say about the second leg. But I'm going to yeah. use that. I'm going to use that with Cincinnati on the money line, and that parlay pays plus 107. So I'm getting plus money on that. Is that the only time I use Dallas? No, I use Dallas the second you used time them also. again in a in a tease. Yeah, yeah you're, you're kind of heavy exposed to Dallas this week. Yeah, well, I like them. I, I like them this week. I, I traditionally they do well in this situation with the Giants. They they steamrolled them last year. Yeah. Uh, the the Giants. You know, I'm not a, I'm not anti Giants at all, and I'm not really pro Dallas. It's just that my model likes this quite a bit, and divisional matchups like this, uh, where you have a favorite this strong, uh, usually uh, work out pretty well. Uh, for the favorite. Uh, people tend to want to take those points. Uh, you always heard uh, Steve and I, when we grew up, it was always the whole Monday night underdogs. Uh, uh, you know, they couldn't lose. And and uh, that eventually turned around. But uh, people would like to take those primetime underdogs and the points. Uh, I'm taking an odd teaser that's actually profitable over time. Uh, I used it uh, personally last week with San Francisco, and San Francisco lost the game, but they covered the teaser. I'm putting Dallas in a three-team teaser plus four and a half for one-third of that three-team teaser. Yeah, that's a 10-point, obviously a 10-point yeah, teaser. Yeah, 10-point teaser, and we'll get to those legs. Again, I, I never know what the best way to reveal the teasers are, but I like the idea of you know giving you the analysis for this game, and we'll get to the other legs a little bit later in the show. Fez, is it fair to say six is the buy point here? We will not see this get to seven, even though Dallas, of course, uh, open or, or look ahead seven. That, that There's no chance we see that by Thursday. I think six flicker. 
and then it goes comes down at post to around five. If you're interested in that money line, danger, here comes math. Here we go. Chris knows what I'm about to say. So um, if you're invested and you have the time and you don't want to just set it and forget it, uh, you'll do better with that parlay to wait until the day of the game and then with all the different books offering it, including betting exchanges, et cetera, play the very, if you want to invest on that parlay for $100, you take the $100, you buy the money line, the cheapest one on Dallas, it cashes, then you get back over. your profits, you roll yep. it over, and you reinvest it in a Cincinnati money line parlay before that game starts. You'll make a few, a, a, just a little bit more. Yeah, if you're only betting ten dollars, you know, it obviously it, set it and forget it might be the better strategy. Betting hundreds of dollars, and obviously those pennies uh, add up to be a little bit higher. Saw the total drop here about four points. Both teams are kind of opposite teams, right? Uh, Chris Dallas an over team three and zero. Giants are a stone cold under team three and zero this year. Um, if that total drops to a certain point, does does that number interest you at all? Now sitting around forty six. Excuse me. Um, total, yeah. 46 and a half, yeah. No, it's, it, it's, it's been inching up since we got on air. So Moving up. Was, Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, so it, it's already heading up. If it would have hit 44, I would have been uh, all yeah. over that, like white on rice. But I, I, I'm probably just going to leave it alone. Is this the week, guys, that we see more scoring and we play the salami yeah. over? I mean, well, at what some about the point. Favorites? I mean, the dogs of six or more have been doing so well. I mean, we're going to see the favorites bounce back at some point, too, right? You know, there's a Wall Street term that says trees don't grow to the sky. And where I go there is that, like, when you see nothing but dogs and nothing but unders, at some point, the markets adjust too much and it's time to start looking the other way. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't know what I don't know why I said the total drop. This total's increased, as Chris said. I was looking at the next game, um, which is the opposite direction, which we'll get to right now because I'll re- recap picks really quick. Dallas is... Uh, uh, heavy exposure for Chris um, in this game. He's got him not only in a parlay, but also in a teaser, which we'll reveal a little bit later in the show. All right, now. 